In this problem, we are going to be solving a Robinson Crusoe economy problem. Another name that is given to this kind of problem is the island economy problem. So let's begin. First step is to find our production possibility frontier, or PPF, for short. So let's find our PPF, OK? First step to finding our PPF is the following. We need to pretty much write down our PPF equation. Our PPF equation is as follows. LX plus LY equals labor endowment. Okay? Based on this problem, we already know labor endowment. There it is. Our labor endowment equals 60. So we know our labor endowment, right? But we need to find our LX and LY. So let's find our LX and LY. So we can actually find our PPF. OK, so we have two production functions here, one for X and one for Y. So let's write down, let's rewrite this production function here. Production for production function for y equals 6ly. Now, in order to find ly, we need to actually divide both sides of the equation by 6. So let's do that. So ly <coughs> equals y over 6. Perfect. Guess what? We just found our ly, and it's going to go here. Okay. Now we need to find our LX. So let's find our LX. Okay. So our production function for X is as follows: two by the square root of LX. So let's divide both sides of the equation by two. So we're left with X divided by two equals the square root of LX. Okay. To get rid of the square root, we square both sides of the equation. So we're left with x squared, 2 squared, lx. So we, of course, got to simplify this. So let's simplify it. lx equals 4 lx. And there it is. We just found our lx. And we're going to plug that in into here. We know our ly. And we're going to plug it in into here. And of course, we know our endowment of labor, which was given. And it's going to go here. So let's plug all these values in. That way we can have our PPF, okay, which we needed. Perfect. Let me do some erasing here. That we have a little bit more space here. I want to have a little bit of space. Okay. So let's write our equation here. So LX equals X squared over 4. LY equals Y over 6. And of course, our endowment on labor equals 60. Okay, So let's uh, erase the remainder here. I just want to have more space. Okay, Perfect. Now, we have these uh, fractions. We don't like fractions here. When solving this kind of problem, we want to get rid of these fractions. So let's get rid of the fractions. Okay? To get rid of this fraction, we can multiply both sides of the equation by 12. So that becomes 1. That becomes 3. So we had 3x squared 
that becomes 1, d becomes 2, so we had 2y. <clears throat> now 12 times 60, what do we get from there? 720. Okay. Let me rewrite this again here. Let me scroll down a little bit. Okay, let me, let's rewrite it here. 3x square plus 2y equals 720. Excellent. Okay. Outstanding. Okay. So we just found our PPF. That was the first step to solving this problem. We need to find what's actually possible. What can we actually produce? Let me rewrite it again here. And this is our PPF. Another word for this is production possibility frontier. Okay? So we found our PPF. Now, let's interpret our utility function. Our utility function is And this utility function came from the problem. There it is, okay? That's where it came from. So that utility function was given. Just in case you wonder where I got that. So it was given to us. Now, what does this utility function mean? Well, here's what it means. It means that x equals to y, okay? You're probably wondering, how do I know that? Well, I got it from here x equals to y. Now let's let me give you another example. What if the utility was the following? What if the utility was minimum 2x y? What about if that was the utility? What would that mean? Well it will mean the following. 2x equals 2y. That's what it, that's what it means. Okay. What if the utility function was two y? Then that would mean x equals to two y. Okay? That's what it will mean. But of course, that's not what we have here. What we have instead is that x equals to y. Okay? So that's what we have here. So I'm going to use this equation here okay, to solve the problem. Okay? So I'm going to erase the utility function. I just wanted to show you where I got x equal to y. Didn't want, I don't want you to be lost here. So we now know where I got x equals to y. So we got two equations. We got equation one. We got equation number two here, right? Now we have a system of equation here. Uh, if you take an algebra, you know what I'm talking about. This is a system of equations, right? So, the way we solve system of equations is by substitution, right? Or by addition, right? Those are two ways that we can solve system of equations. But, Guess what? I'm just going to use substitution here because it's easy. I think uh, that's what we're going to do right now. So let me write this one here over here. So we got x equals y. And this is our second equation. Okay. 
perfect. So let's have, so since we know x equals to y, then we can actually substitute here. And plug it in here. So we can substitute this y for x and plug it in here because we know x equals to y. So let's do that. So we rewrite the first equation as follow. Right? Perfect. And now you know where I got the x, right? So we rewrote that first equation. Uh, we substituted y with x because we know x equals to y. Now, I want you to notice something. What does that tell us? You already know what that means. That means this equation is a quadratic equation. So that means in order to solve for x, we need to use the quadratic function. So we're going to do that. Let me do some erasing here. Perfect. Perfect. Some erasing. Let me rewrite this again because we're going to need a lot of space here. Okay. We're going to need a lot of space. Okay. Now we need to use our quadratic function here. Okay. <clears throat> so if you remember, our quadratic function is as follows negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. Divide all of this by 2a. Okay? So that's our quadratic equation, remember, from algebra. And we know this is our a, this is our b. Uh, let me write this equation. Now you know you see what I'm talking about. 3x squared to x minus 720 equals 0. And this is going to be our a. This is going to be our B, and this is going to be our C, okay? okay? So our A, our B, and our C. Now that we know our A and B and C, we can plug those values into a quadratic equation here. And again, at this point, this is all algebra. Okay? There is nothing complicated here. There is no calculus so far. Okay? So let's solve for our x to be plus or minus 2 square minus 4 times 3 times 720 divide all of this by 2 times 3 right so let's continue solving negative 2 plus or minus 4 plus 8640 divide all of this by 2 times 3. Perfect. Let's continue solving. x equals minus 2 plus or minus 86 44 divide this by 6. Let's continue solving. What do we get here? So we got negative 2. Hold on, let me erase that. It's so going to be negative 2 plus or minus 92 
0.9 okay divide all of that by 6 let me scroll down so we can get more space x equals 15.16 perfect this is the amount of good x that is going to maximize the utility of our consumer now that we found our optimal good x now we need to find our optimal good y and for that remember our utility function and we knew from our utility function that x equals to y so guess what we're going to get this value for x and plug it in here and when we do that we find out that the optimal value of y is 15.16 so we find an optimal uh, good x and good y that will maximize our consumer's utility now let's find what's going to be the optimal labor allocation to this good x and good y so let's do that we're actually almost done with this problem and as you can see it wasn't that difficult it was very basic basic algebra remember that our production function for y was 6 ly and remember that was given we know our value for y our value for y is 15.6 so let's plug that into here 15.16 equals 6 ly so we divide both sides of the equation by 6 to find our ly so what do we get we get that ly so our optimal allocation labor toward y or good y is 2.5 okay now let's find an optimal allocation for labor for good x remember the production function for good x was this perfect remember now that we have our value for x our value for x it's this one here right so we're gonna plug that in here okay so let me scroll down perfect so our x equals 15.16 to square root of lx so we divide both sides of the equation by 2 and what do we get 7.58 equals the square root of lx now in order to get rid of this uh, square root we square both sides right so what do we get 57.5 equals lx and guess what we just solved the problem this is the optimal allocation of labor in order to maximize the utility of our consumer we need to allocate 2.5 units of labor to the production of good y we need to allocate the 57.5 units of labor to the production of x in order to maximize the utility of our consumer and this problem we only use basic algebra and there were no basic uh, there were no calculus so it was a very easy problem If you want to continue watching more videos, please subscribe and like. Take care.